Morning. Welcome to T-Mobile Park and welcome to our fans watching live on Mariners.com. Uh, we are very excited to announce the five-year signing of left-handed pitcher Robbie Ray. We'll open with Jerry's comments and welcoming Robbie to the organization. Jerry? Thanks, Kelly. Uh, first, I will. I'll, I'll welcome Robbie to the organization. His wife, Taylor, who's here in the, in the back. Welcome to Seattle. Uh, this is a great day for the Mariners and you all know from you know, our description of what we were trying to accomplish this offseason that this lines up very much with, with what our goals were uh, to bring in the lead dog for for a starting rotation that we think has a chance to go out and be one of the best in the league and you know signing the reigning Cy Young award winner is a rare occurrence I think this is the ninth time it's happened in history so 
130 plus Cy Young awards have been handed out, and and this is a very rare opportunity to to attract a, a current Cy Young award winner to a new market. And Robbie had a dominant season uh, this this year in 2021. Uh, led the league in virtually everything you can lead the league in. It appeared. <laughs> um, and brings an element to us, which is a presence and a and a the the strikeout ability that he's always uh, shown as a major leaguer is is critical to a staff that has generally been more driven toward contact and strike throwing. And as you all know, we've we've focused on dominating the strike zone, and I think that was the key ingredient for Robbie in 2021. You know, making taking the step from good to great was was dominating the zone the way he did, and and we're really excited to see what that does as we move ahead with the Mariners, and and we feel like this is you know another in a in a series of moves over this last you know for ten days or so that that really put us in a position to to go out and compete for a division title, which is that is our goal is to get to the postseason and and then let the players take us where they're going to take us. So, with that. Uh, I'd like to welcome Robbie and Taylor to Seattle, and we'll have us crawling up to grab the jersey. Turn around and give him a, a look at the back. Good. Welcome in there. We will. So with that, we'll take your questions. We do have a crowd mic, so if you raise your hand, um, we'll get Alex to bring you the mic. Alex, we'll start with Chris. Robbie, could you just talk about just just the pure excitement of coming to this organization, so much momentum after last season, and just uh, the thoughts of being on this Mariners team? Yeah, um, you know, seeing the last uh, series uh, that was played here, the fan the fan base, you know, showing up, seeing the you know talking to Jerry and Justin and the ownership, and seeing the vision and and the direction of this team and and the way that it was headed. Uh, Man, I just I just wanted to be a part of it, and I could just tell the excitement uh, with this organization and with this city, and you know this this team, this city is hungry for a for a World Series, and you know to be a part of it and and bring it back, bring it here. Um, it, I, I just wanted to be here. Robbie, Daniel? congratulations. Uh, we've seen such a rush of transactions across the league the past couple of days. You know how did how did things kind of fall into place with you and in, uh, in the, the negotiations here? Yeah, um, it, it was kind of a whirlwind. Um, you know, we, we got on a Zoom call, we talked, uh, had great conversation, uh, talked with, you know, Jerry and Justin and the front office and, and um, spoke with the, the pitching um, the pitching group here. And, you know, it just seemed like a really good fit. And we were ready to move forward. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it happened really quickly, but we're, we're glad that it did. Uh, but Robbie, what did you feel clicked this year that allowed you to just sort of move up to the next level? And is it something that you feel like you've got now and it, it's sustainable? Yeah, um, you know, I felt like I've always had the mindset of going out and attacking, uh, but it, it didn't necessarily match up with with the delivery. And this year, I feel like I really nailed that down. And I feel I feel really good about the consistency of the delivery and and that consistency uh, matched with that mindset. I feel like is is what allowed me to succeed this year. Robbie, was it a priority for you to try and get a deal done before the pending lockout, or were you willing to wait and go into sort of the, uh, the unknown of, of when the opportunity might present itself again? Yeah, um, you know, we were we were ready to wait if if need be, but you know, we were very excited about Seattle and and like I said, the the direction, the vision, and it was just a good fit, and and everything just lined up for us uh, to make it happen beforehand. Hi, Robbie. Uh, welcome to Seattle. As you talked about the changes you made last year, as you were going through your time in Arizona, probably certainly some frustration over the lack of command. 
do you ever reach kind of a boiling point with that, or how did you sort of keep your you know your head on your shoulders there as you're work, walking through that? Because obviously a lot of swing and miss stuff, but the element of command w- continued to be missing. And when that clicked, how good did that feel? Yeah, it felt great. Um, you know, like you said, I, I've always had swing and miss stuff. I felt like um, you know I was one tweak away, and I felt like I was always I felt like I was always making a tweak or or trying to, to change something up. And, and this past year, I, I feel like I found something that is just never going to change. And it's it feels right. It feels comfortable. It feels normal. Uh, and it's repeatable. I think that's the biggest thing is I was always looking for something that I could repeat. And, and that felt natural to me. And, um, you know, I found it and I, I hit the ground running with it. Hey, Robbie, uh, we heard that you had consulted a little bit with Mitch Haniger on, uh, you know, coming here. Can you kind of walk us through what that conversation was like and, uh, you know, what he told you about Seattle? Yeah, um, I played with Mitch in Arizona and, you know, I I love him as a as a person and as a player. He's a he's a gamer and, you know, had a great year. And just listening to him and uh, talk about this city and talk about the fans and talk about, uh, this team, the group of guys that's in that clubhouse. I mean, th- that group of guys is is the guys you go to war with. And and hearing him talk about the guys in that team in that clubhouse, um, the camaraderie, the brotherhood, uh, it just it just seemed right. It just seemed like a really good fit. And I, I just felt like that I would be able to bring an element of you know a veteran presence to try to you know help these younger guys uh, come along. Robbie, along the lines of fit, what was it that you were looking for in terms of, you know, those that are going to help you, the pitching group that's going to be around you and that you're going to be working with every day? Yeah, this pitching group is top notch. I think, uh, you know, just talking to them, talking to the analytical department. I mean, this game is always changing. And if you're not growing and changing with it, then you're just you're sitting still and it's going to leave you behind. And I feel like this pitching group has has a, a great group of guys that are looking to push it forward and push the envelope and, and, and is looking for something um, that that no other team is is looking for, and you know, to me that that excited me. Hey Jerry, uh, you talked a little bit at the start about um, you know Robbie being the lead dog and all that. As we continue to get further away from 2020 with uh, innings workloads and all that, and guys are kind of returning to a normal um, expectation of where they could work. How important is it? I mean, I think I know the answer, but how important is it to pencil in 32 starts, 200 innings? You know, Chris Flex and obviously played a huge role in that last year and it has a big effect on the entire state of the the pitching staff not just the rotation well we feel like with the the starters we have in place robbie and marco with logan and flex like those are durable starting pitchers who have generally delivered innings you know with the exception of the first half this year with marco we had a little bit of a hiccup there it's exciting for us to send a starting pitcher out there every day who has an opportunity to go deep into that game and you know Robbie has has established that as much as anybody in baseball in recent years and I I think that's one of the main attractions for us is we want to be the team where when when other teams are coming to Seattle to play us they look at the three pitchers or the four pitchers that are lined up for that series and they, and they say oh man you know we're, we're, we're gonna have some this series and, you know, that I think is, is one of the real benefits because we do believe in, in the pitching we're building. And obviously, you know, Robbie's durability. And I, I don't even know if I want to use a pencil. You know, it's a, I, I'd rather use a pen. <laughs> and that's, that, that's kind of what this was, was about. Jerry, I think it was Saturday um, that you had said that there was a, when the Adam Fraser trade, you had said that there was a couple of offers that you had out at, the, at that point. Was, was Robbie one of those? That, that you had out, and, and as he said, did this come together pretty swiftly? Uh, no, it was not one of those that we had out on Saturday, and you know, but it was one that we had out shortly after that. So, uh, no, we, we were thrilled, and it did move pretty quickly with Robbie, and, and uh, we were still in discussions on Saturday, but there was no offer out. Jerry, a little uh, elaboration on that. What, what was the how did the how did the initiative to seek Robbie come about and what was the sequence of events that made it happen? Well, I mean, we went into the off season first and we were pretty clear with this. We were focused on a series of things. One, we wanted to add to the top of our starting rotation. We would also like to add depth to our starting rotation. We wanted to add length to our lineup and we wanted to find an impact bat or two that, that could really, you know, I guess build something in the middle of the order in the top half of the order that really drove our offense. 
So Robbie was on our, our list uh, of players that we were most interested in. And, you know, we started the offseason focused on, on the offensive players. And as we got uh, into Thanksgiving week, it became apparent to us that the pitching was moving pretty quickly. Uh, and at that point, we got in, in touch with Steve Veltman, who represents Robbie. You know, and, and, you know, Steve had expressed to us that Robbie had interest in Seattle, and, and we reciprocated. We got together for, for some Zooms. I think a, a series of Zooms with first with myself, Scott, Justin, and then with our pitching group and, and some of the coaching staff. And and from that point it came together pretty quickly. I would say, you know, within seventy two hours we, we we struck a deal, which was fantastic. Jerry, you mentioned on Saturday that you weren't looking at the CBA's expiration as a deadline for making transactions. But is it nice to have a little bit more roster clarity, um, you know, given the the action that you guys have had over the past couple of days? It's just nice to have Robbie Ray, you know, <laughs> and, you know, I'd be honest with you. And, and, you know, I'd say the same about Adam Frazier. It's uh, the, the day of the on the calendar doesn't matter for us. It's we believe that the next five years are going to be uh, the, for the Mariners what we've been building toward. That'll be the crescendo. And the fact that that Robbie's here for that is something we're all excited about. Robbie, obviously a big family man, wife and, and kids. When you mentioned to them we're, we're heading to Seattle, I imagine that was part of the discussion with your wife. Just talk about coming to Seattle and, and raising your family here. Yeah, we were, you know, almost immediately when, you know, we came to a, a deal, we started looking for, for houses in the area, started looking around, started looking at the Seattle area, and uh, my wife is, is great with that. Uh, I'm not really that uh, – technically savvy but she's great at you know uh, looking through houses and, and finding things and you know we're you know still searching but yeah they were excited too my son uh, my oldest son Asher I mean that everybody saw on on TV uh, it kind of stole the show from me on the Cy Young Award but um, he was excited he you know he was excited to come here he's he was he was thrilled Robbie, obviously so many of our questions here today have centered how this team was right on the doorstep of making the playoffs in 2021. What does it mean to you that your work, your improvement, especially this past year, made it so you're the guy that the Mariners see is putting them into the playoffs, making that next step? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I, I, I welcome that. I mean, I want to be the guy that is is counted on. I, I spoke with Scott um, on a Zoom, and I said I wanted to be the guy that he he could let go out there for seven, eight innings every night, and just know he could trust me. We could build that relationship together. So I want to be that guy. I, I want to be the guy that leads the league in, in innings every year. That's the guy that I feel like I am, and I feel like that this year, this past year, that I I unlocked that. And so you know, I I, I welcome that. Yeah, Robbie. Um... Could you just sort of elaborate on what your impressions of the Mariners were? You said that you sort of sensed the excitement when you came to town, and you know what what stood out to you. And when you were talking to to Jerry, did he lay out of the vision of kind of where he wants to take this team and maybe some future additions that might happen? Yeah, I mean, I think he spoke on it. You know, they they wanted to add the uh, top of the rotation starting pitcher. They wa they wanted to add to this team, and and to me. You know, seeing the core of the group uh, of the group here, and 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 the guys in that clubhouse, you know, just a couple additions away from really making a push for it, and seeing that they wanted to make those additions to me was, you know, it helped me along to make my my decision to come here. Jerry, um, in terms of you don't have a crystal ball, certainly, and um, you know, with the lockout potentially kind of clouds things, but what is a, uh, a deal like this? Uh, what kind of signal can it potentially send to, uh, you know, other free agents that, you know, you've got Robbie Ray uh, who just won a Cy Young award to come to Seattle. Is, is there a hope or maybe a potential trickle down effect here um, in terms of how serious you guys are about augmenting this roster? Yeah, I I actually shared it with Taylor and Robbie upstairs. I, I think it it it's on. You know, when when Robbie walks in the door, I think that is a statement that we are serious about the the want to go out and contend for for a championship. Uh, we've we've worked long and hard to develop this young core of players. We feel really good about the 2021 season and how much progress this group has made. And like we said at the outset of the off season, now it's incumbent on us to to add and to and to bring players to the Mariners that can push us over the top. And, I, you know, Robbie, Adam Frazier are, are the first wave of that. We don't intend to stop. You know, we, we want to continue to add to this team. And, 
and you know whether that whether that is today, tomorrow, or or a week from now, I, we want to continue to do that. And and you guys have been around you know me for long enough to know, and I know Justin's been around me for more than long enough to know. <laughs> we, we'll keep pushing, and, and there's we we won't sleep until we figure out a way to to put the best you know 26 guys in that locker room, and and we feel like we're getting closer. Hey, Robbie, you mentioned a couple of times you felt like this last year, it really came together for you where you started to feel that consistency and everything. What was that process like for you where you felt like it started to click and betting that in and, and knowing that it was there for you on a consistent basis? And, and when did you feel like you really truly had it? Yeah, uh, for me, I, I felt like I put in the work this offseason with my workouts and, and just really nailing down my, my delivery. I, you know, I, I did a bunch of dry drills to just – get that repetitiveness of getting that feel. It's almost like riding a bike. The more you do it, the better it's going to be, the more crisp it's going to be. And so, I mean, I really saw the the results of it uh, right out of spring training. I mean, I, I mean, I, I went into spring and my first bullpen session, I, I, I laugh and joke about it, but I, it was like 96 to 97 down and away, up and in everything. Like it just seemed like everything started to come together and, and, and I hit the ground running. And so for me, it, it happened from the very beginning. I, I started to see those those changes that I make come come to light and, and really work for me. Any additional questions? Uh, Robbie, you've been with several teams, several organizations now, and uh, you've had overcome injuries and other sorts of things. Where was the low point in, try, in, in contrast to what you've experienced now with the Cy Young Award and uh, a major contract. How, how big a leap has that been? Yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, 2020 was not a great year for me. I felt like those changes that I, I talked about, I had tried to make over the years, I tried to shorten up my arm and, and it just happened that it didn't work out, but I wouldn't have known that it didn't work out if I hadn't have gone through it and tried it. And so in 2020, I tried to shorten my arm action. It just didn't work out for me. Um, going into that next off season, I knew I needed to make another change. And, you know, I was able to, to get it together and, and that's what you saw. And Jerry, the obvious thing heading into tonight with the impending lockout, obviously there's not much you can do once it starts, but from a mental standpoint, how do the Mariners try to weather that storm for however long it lasts? We're just going to continue to focus on how we can get better. And, you know, it's a, that's that's been our goal throughout. And we can't focus on things that we can't control, you know. So we're, we are going to focus on making the roster better. And, you know, for the remainder of the day, for tomorrow, for next week, regardless of what's happening in the world around us, we're just going to keep continue to focus and stay disciplined. Thank you both Jerry and Robbie. That will wrap up today's news conference. We'll have Robbie available at the far end for one-on-ones and Jerry will be available at this end for one-on-ones. Thank you.